All right, that is quite the crowd. So um, thanks for joining today. I'm just doing a quick scan. I got Justin, Phil, Mike, Derek. Okay. All right, great. So um, we're all pretty familiar with the, the Docker Terms of Service stuff that's been uh, coming. And we've been discussing it quite a bit around the various impacts and what does it really mean in the bigger picture. Um, there's the deleting of content, which of course I, I don't think we're really too worried about, at least in this forum. Um, it's six months and hasn't been used, then there's a larger conversation fine uh, about preserving all content. Um, the bigger impact is what does it mean for customers that are dependent on images that are in Docker Hub and uh, while Docker's got a, a means to provide customers the ability to get that content without being throttled, um, it's there are the question of whether they should be getting that um, public content with authentication and so forth is an interesting question. But the larger thing that we've been kind of really discussing amongst the cloud vendors and you know, ISVs and so forth um, is where, you know, what does that reliability look like? Um, we've talked a little bit about there's additional challenges because when you're using some of these multi-tenant services, um, it's Docker doesn't know whether they're coming from a particular customer. Is it that one customer is the 201st customer that requested or 200 customers before then made a request? And then my first request happens to get throttled because we're all sharing a collection of shared IPs because that's the way, you know, uh, scalable clouds work. Um, so it's kind of evolved into a larger conversation of reliability. It's not just a, a shared cost model. And what we wanted to try to do is uh, use this as a moment to kind of educate customers and on a, a, the general concern around reliability of public content. Uh, it's not that public content itself wouldn't be reliable. There's just a lot of connections between that source, the internet, and the destination. You know, we've all seen the, you know, there's, I want to say the majority, there's lots of different outages that have nothing to do with a particular provider. Uh, there's been DNS outages, there have been CDN outages, there has been humans involved that drive trucks and backhoes and so forth. So to try to put a better context to this, um, like I said, we want to write this article and it's not specific to Docker images. Um, the, well, Docker images are large, um, that's certainly a, an impact. They're also used in production environments, um, whereas NPM, NuGet, you know, you could argue Debian and others, they're not production assets. They're assets that get built in a development environment and get tested and then promoted. Um, and usually they're actually delivered from some local reliable, uh, relatively reliable, that we'll see that in a moment, source. Um, so I've been trying to figure out how to, to best message this and we'll, we're, we're talking about writing a shared article, but to set the stage a little bit, I did in my typical model, wanted to share a couple of slides that show, uh, kind of show this model. And it hopefully is just a reminder of the stuff we're already doing today. So let me, um, I kind of jumped right in. There's the typical hack MD sign in, please. Um, but let me get this up while I'm doing that. Okay, can folks see my screen? I think I've got all the icons right that says people can, should be able to see my screen. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. So I've been trying to refer to this and this is certainly a rough sketch the first time. So this is, you know, obviously needing some, some help. But if we took a particular region, and I'm just gonna pick a particular region and we stand up some compute in that region. And of course, there's lots of compute. And I'm talking about a particular app per se. And of course, in our world, we think of containers running on that compute. And I'm not by any means trying to get into the serverless conversation. The point is there's some kind of compute and we run uh, some workloads on it. And of course, there's some kind of storage that's some kind of multi-tenant storage, right? We don't buy disks in clouds anymore for the most part. You know, we buy you know access to resources and queuing, and there's some kind of authentication model that's there. And then there's this networking that holds that whole environment together as well. 
And of course, we use things like load balancers to load balance across these workloads for various different reliability, scalability, all the itty reasons. And then we have the nebulous cloud with things like DNS and CDN in them. And we've got a poor user that's just connecting through the local ISP, which we all seem to be doing these days. So great, they connect and hopefully through DNS, if it's working right, they get routed to a load balancer and that load balancer would route within that, you know, that regional area of a workload. Now stuff happens, right? You know, containers fail. We design these to fail as opposed to be uh, you know, fail fast, so to speak. And other infrastructure can fail. They can take out our environments. But with things like load balancers, they've got health checks and they know like, hey, that's not working anymore. Let me yank it out and kind of self-heal across the other model. And those are things that we do in our environment of our apps. But of course, there's this larger infrastructure. And, you know, it's not often, but it does happen where a cloud's regional infrastructure can fail. You know, there might be some storage that goes out and a whole bunch of customers are affected. And even VMs that are trying to scale up are affected because the storage infrastructure might be out. Authentication might go out and that takes out, you know, pretty much can take out an entire region, if not more. Um, so we start to have these problems, but, you know, we're like, okay, that's why we have, you know, multi-region availability. Uh, and different clouds, you know, we, we there's multi-region, there's zonal, there's all kinds of different ways. The point is, is that you split this workload up across two locations, because even when the humans with backhoes or storms that come and take out large swaths, there's another one nearby and that can keep it available. So our customers, as you see, the, the CDN, the DNS is pulled off of East US and now it's gone to West US for the sake of argument here. Now, if we zoom all the way out and that same customer or different customers from around the world are trying to get in, they can get routed to lots of locations, right? So that's, that's kind of a standard model, whether they're doing all of that or not, it's not important. But you, know, you can route between a lot of them. The question is, if we're building this infrastructure, design, if customers are building this, would they ever, sorry, um, if one of those regions, the entire region goes out that customers are still available because the wonderful cloud lets us just route bits to different locations. The question is, would we ever build a system that has some central dependency on some particular resource? I'm just picking on Australia here, I don't know why. Um, because if Australia goes out, then they're all out and there really isn't anywhere to go because you now have this critical piece of the system that has taken everything out. So if you kind of think about what we've been doing with public content, with the assumption that public content is available for production workloads, why is it we're assuming that a public registry is a central point of failure that might have a failure that has nothing to do with that registry itself or that cloud itself? I was gonna draw pictures of CDNs and DNSs in there that you know, could cause this outage. Everybody gets taken out. That's not a good design. <laughs> Right? So we've all learned to bring milk and now toilet paper into our own home and not depend it's going to be at the store when we need it. Um, why is it we're building production architectures that kind of assume this model as well? Um, so that's the preface. Um, the discussions and, you know, a rough outline of something that we have been discussing, wanting to try to get messaging out, because there's, there's two phases. There is this immediate messaging what do we help the, you know, the larger community of customers to, to do about this? Because Docker can have all the money in the world to you know, never throttle anybody. They have no ability to make the internet reliable. Um, is this a moment where we start talking about what the, the long-term models sh should be? Um, so the thought premise, and as we talked more about this, it, it seems like something that shouldn't be any particular cloud that has to go through this or any particular ISV, whether it be you know, GitHub or Brian's here, um, or uh, where was I going with that, uh, that should take on the story. But OCI was pretty much formed around that model of this vendor neutral body that you know, kind of uh, curates the, the infrastructure that works across all of our clouds that we're all dependent on it. 
So there's a short term of an article that we would get out to help customers understand um, the, the positioning on it. Long term, we'd like to move, whether it's a mirroring solution or a workflow that has gates so that we don't get well promoted content that happens to break everybody also work through a mirror. That's a longer term thing that we'd like to figure out, hopefully through OCI, what we would do uh, for the next year. But what do we do for you know, the pending November 1st through the holidays where we're all locked down. Um, so with that, I'll stop talking and open the floor. Mm. I'll, I'll briefly, oh, go ahead, Omar, I'm sorry. Well, I think we, We've already chatted once on this, so there's some there's some insight we can actually share. You can go first if you need to, Michael. That's fine. Well, I actually just wanted to thank Steve. I think it was a, a I would have blundered in just talking about the details of the problem, assuming everybody had already spent their days worrying about it. I thought it was a great high level picture, and thanks very much for putting it together. So, great. Thanks. Yep. Yep. Uh, I, I think at least from, and this is common, I think, to all our cloud. Our customers, while while the public registry or while the public registry is just such a stalker hub where customers are pulling images from, many many customers end up doing what we're already suggesting they should do. They copy those images into their private registries, and they 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 may take build time dependencies on that. But I mean. I'm not sure at scale how many multi-regional customers are actually going to take runtime dependencies pulling directly from a, a, an environment where they don't actually have some ownership and control over. And obviously the large- We've all been surprised at how many actually are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are. And I, and I, and I say that with some, with some grain of salt here, but it, Customers already solving this problem in some fashion, right? That's one. And two, they all have varying needs as to why they have to solve it and, and why they need to make copies of what they do with it. They're doing that today. So anything we end up in the short term giving guidance on is going to be simply reinforcing as a best practice. Look, do that because it makes sense, right? It also helps Docker just in general. But that's the best I can say as, and, and then going beyond in longer term, obviously that's not something we need to try and figure out right this second, but that's, uh, I would take, it's kind of like making a large statement to try and tell a, a broader container industry across the world. It's like, hey, here's how, and here's the standards body that's gonna come help you. Like, like I'm not sure where OCI plays a part outside of sharing and talking about this. Obviously, in terms of running share infrastructure, that's not something, you know. Mm. So, so like you can say this, this, this is a good way to do this, but then that second part is going to be a more thorny problem to solve. In the short term, giving guidance to customers, saying we're aware this is how it could be, Here's what you should definitely go look at. That seems like a no-brainer almost, right? Like we should we should do that because many of us are probably already thinking about something like that. So Omar, now I actually have something concrete to say. I, I, first of all, I, I think you know you're right that this is a customer problem that needs to solve. It's like we can all as cloud providers talk about it to help, and standards bodies can talk about it various ways. But the other thing, the customers have to own their supply chain. That's sort of the point, and control their supply chain. Um, I think that there is an urgent situation right now, which I think is why we're here talking about this. Um, you know, if you squint and you look at OCI, is this OCI's problem or business? I don't know, I'm, I've never been to one of these meetings before. I don't know what the scope is, but this is definitely a place where everybody who is worrying about the problem can at least talk about how to okay. provide guidance Agreed. right now. And it seemed expedient. Um, Agreed, that makes sense. This, this is the right place. On the same page. Thanks. Okay. By the way, I, I'm new to this meeting. My name is Michael Windsor. I'm a product management lead for, COD, for sort of our CICD products at Google. Uh, various parts of my team work with you in various other ways. So, hi. So, I have uh, some thoughts. Um, 
we so at VMware we already have these uh, uh, policies in place, which is to pull from Docker Hub, pull from our internal instance. The trouble we have though is that when we use um, when we work with open source projects, most of their code base uses uh, Docker files or something else that would pull from uh, one of these uh, registries. Uh, and if we don't have, I mean, if, if that end of it is unreliable, and that I, I'm guessing that that's generally what the problem is, is that um, if we have if we have an ecosystem that has folks doing, you know, uh, from blah, I'm using Docker and I have this Docker file over here, which is in a make file that will build, you know, our whole supply chain and uh, push it to different places, then how are we going to I mean, how are we, how do we reconcile that? No, it's a, it's a great question. And it kind of falls into the short and long-term uh, various approaches. Um, there's, and I, I was just trying to find a good place to pause in, in this conversation. I mean, there is, you bring up a good point. Like if I just cloned a repo and I want to do a from, like how do I change that from? So it's pulled from the image that my team has built um, for, no Java, whatever, um, Debian, you know, Alpine. So yeah, that it will result um, in an automatic fork of an open source project, which we don't really want to do. No, 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 I agree. So if you look at, and again, this is in the longer bucket. So I want to be really clear about what we're talking about now versus some options of what we could talk about in the future. So this is really a matter of buying time till we can have this larger conversation which to Michael and Omar's point is, uh, I think this is a good conversation to have in OCI because it's this vendor neutral grouping of people across all clouds that have a shared interest. But one of the conversations, and, and you know, Justin and I have talked about it as well, is you know, if you look at most other package managers, the package you pull is, or the package you are referencing in your thing, you don't actually specify where, which registry it pulls it from, you're specifying this thing. And then separately, there's this configuration that says, by the way, use the public one or use this private one, uh, you know, my get and so forth. Uh, and that's a separate configuration. So if your from statement say, here's the name thing that I want, and separately, you can configure your system that says, by the way, use you know, my registry .com, you know, then that from statement doesn't change. The Docker file doesn't change. Now, I'm not trying to propose all the details and get into a larger conversation on it because there's also the conversations of mirrors and does a mirror handle this? Does, does it have to be a gated mirror because I don't necessarily want to take the latest from something upstream that I haven't tested for my environment? But that right there is the premise of why we think um, the OCI working group is the, the right place to have this conversation because Certainly in this ecosystem, whether it be container D or build kit or all these, whether they come out of OCI, the same people working in this OCI group have, you know, tentacles as I look at Misha's uh, icon there, uh, tentacles into all the groups that are working on these various projects. So I understand that uh, Google has a project called Co that has kind of solve this, kind of, sort of, but I'm not very familiar with it. I, I maintain that and I don't think we solved that in any way, um, but I'd be interested to understand what you're saying. So uh, my understanding is that uh, you make, um, you create, it ha uses a generic protocol called uh, Co, and it has its own resolver that will uh, resolve it to whichever registry is needed based on some configuration. Uh, I understand that's how it works. 
Uh, it's, I, I see what you mean. Yeah, we do something similar, but I mean, it, it solves this problem for just building Go apps into containers. Um, but yeah, we, we have an environment variable that's basically publish images to this place. Um, that doesn't really solve the pull images from this place problem, but I see what you mean. It's kind of similar. Yeah. Um, and if another I, thing that is very, oh, go ahead. Sorry. So I, I think that the, the current problem, as certainly from our experience in talking to customers, right, is that although there are possible implementation strategies that they could change such that their build processes or the build tools did not have defaults in a certain direction or whatever. The current situation is one where there are a ridiculously large number of Docker files that say from this and the tool chain expects those resources to be available. And to Omar's continued displeasure, and I support him on this, they are happening in production, often on production systems where the pull is happening at the last possible minute. Um, and so that is, you know, bad on so many levels, including causing, you know, significant organizational, like, you know, bandwidth strain on everybody, uh, especially Docker. Um, and, you know, what we're trying to get to right now is a guidance forward to help people mitigate the situation to help Docker not get melting down, be melting down into load. Um, and then longer term, yes, alternative approaches to building, whether it's the tool, the client, Etc. There's a lot of things that we can talk about, but I, I'd like us to anchor for today's conversation because November 1st is what 16 days away or something like that um, on how we can uh, jointly provide guidance. And then absolutely, Nisha, you, everything you're saying about how we can dig in and how we can apply different tooling or changes to the ecosystem that we all work with to get to a place where customers are perhaps guided more directly or have to make more intentional choices about where they're pulling their bits from rather than a, a central default that creates problems. Absolutely, preaching to the choir. Okay. Um, so uh, would, do you think it would be a good idea to maybe have different uh, industries share their guidance if they have any? We can find some uh, patterns. I think in the short term, this group of people here can probably put, like the goal is to have, have this group of people here who I think have, uh, and I'm flattering Steve and Omar and myself and my team to believe that we have reasonably good ideas about what we would tell customers and we would love other people to contribute to have this group of people then at the OCI level publish joint guidance with a bunch of signatories. That's sort of how we decided to come to this meeting and we'd love your part to be part of that. And then in the longer term, yeah, I think there's a, a, a digging in deeper and understanding on a per industry basis or different segments, how, how to provide that guidance. Um, but I, I honestly think that in a matter of days, we can put together a reasonably good draft of what we would suggest our customers to uh, the industry to do in terms of mitigating the situation. I think the, the challenge that we've had is look in the scope of things, we'd love to just say, Hey, Docker, can you wait till February past the holidays and we'll deal with this then when we've got a better solution. Um, that assumes endless money, that assumes things aren't falling over. There's lots of assumptions in there that are just, are just not reality. Um, so we wanted to not leave this just out there for customers to have random failures and kind of create lack of credibility for all of us that have been working in this industry for so long. Because there's no one, a customer that's going to get a failure is not going to just be upset at one entity. They're going to be upset. And when they're upset, it doesn't really matter which direction it gets faced. So it's none of the clouds, none of the vendors, nobody's going to win in that situation. So what can we do proactively to help customers not just make excuses, but see a bigger picture of something and kind of recognize where we're at. This isn't just related to, um, to Docker images, right? The, there's Helm stuff that's been going on. There's NPM. There's other, there's all kinds of package manager problems that have the same thing. Brian was, I mentioned this the other day uh, in our call. So um, I think it's just a matter of what can we, you know, the, the thought was, can we write a, a quick article, get it out in the next week or two um, so that customers will have some, you know, uh, some knowledge. Now, obviously they can't just change their workflow that quick, especially when we're not even really telling them exactly what to do and here's the exact tools. Um, it's more a matter of like the immediate, like here's the framing of it. By the way, if you put your Docker credentials in, um, through your service, even for your from statements and your build statements, 
you will not have uh, you will not have this throttling problem. You won't necessarily solve the reliability problem, which is why we want to start promoting this the general workflow. Um, and to be fair, the the thought process is there's this general workflow that says, hey, you should definitely consume curated public content, bring it into your environment, test it, and then you know um, work from there. Every cloud and ISV is going to have a competitive model for how to do that. There's probably some common pieces, some kind of eventing model. Maybe we put into distribution spec that we've been talking about for a while that lets people know when a tag has been updated. And those are all the nuanced conversations of, of things that we can talk about later. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm trying to think how to say this, Steve. I mean, I, I had no problem with this discussion coming here because I, I think it's important and we have good representation here. You know, the funny thing is like, that's really a now statement. If you had showed up two years ago, barely any registry folks were here because we weren't working on distribution yet. So like historically the OCI hasn't really had much to say in this space because we've been doing runtime spec and image spec. Um, I, I guess, yeah, just to cut to the chase, I'm still struggling. Like I, I want to participate in this. I think it's important. I'm still trying to see like what, why would the industry look to OCI to say something here? Because they've never come to us before about like, this is mostly a cloud platform topic, um, implementation specific topic. Um, so I, again, I'm, I definitely do not say that in the sense of like, uh, you know, that's not for us to do. I'm just, I'm trying to figure out how we frame that as like, or that we all of a sudden become a reliable source of information about something that we've never really covered before. Um, so that, that's just a kind of internal, you know, rumbling around in my head. I guess another way to look at that, Phil, is that we're, this is this austere group, right, is, is focused on CNCF as well. And we're the, you know, the Kubernetes side of the, of images, right? Yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it, at this point in time, like, it's a great, like, coming here right now, like, you're, you look at the participant list, we've got every cloud provider registry represented here. We have a bunch of container D and Kubernetes related maintainers. So yes, I, I get that. We're all here and, and we're, in that sense, we're the right group. I guess, you know, whatever we're authoring, like. Yeah, it's not really. It OCI. Yeah, it doesn't matter that it says OCI anywhere on there or is it more important that it's like container D maintainers, AWS, Azure, Google, IBM, VMware, et cetera. Right. I think I mean I, I have been more involved more recently. Like I don't have the history that you know you're talking about the runtime and spec that came in. Or certainly, you know, just as I've been involved, it's been, there has been a, a you know a registry focus on it. So when we were talking about how we could you know, the whole positioning has been this is not just a Docker problem. It doesn't matter who picks this up. Most, you know, NPM had problems with this before you know being you know, moving into GitHub. Um, and these are much smaller packages, right? So this is a general problem. It's only getting worse. If we're going to co-author an article so that it's not just this fractured set of messaging all over the place, where would you host it? And it just seemed like the OCI working group was the, the center incubus in a way that seemed like a fairly neutral place to put it. Um, that was really the extent of the thought. Yeah, and, and 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 to be honest, like I'm not at all arguing that that we shouldn't host the blog post or any any of the. What I'm worried about is actually maybe the longer term is like, I don't want people to say, oh, the OCI is going to provide a solution to Docker Hub uh, rate limiting, which you know I, again I don't think anyone here thinks that's what what OCI will provide. It's just it's so far away from you know what the OCI has on its plate but I, I guess that's what I'm saying is like however we frame the long game it needs to clearly differentiate that this the the end solution will not be coming from OCI 
Uh, I see. Least, you weren't as worried about the article. You were the, there's something about what I said that triggered your concern that OCI somehow has some longer term runtime cloud something implementation. Is that kind of what I might have triggered? Yeah. This well? uh, yeah, yeah. And maybe I need to think about that more. I, I don't want to just ramble about it because I really don't want to hold us up from I, like, I think the short term, the article, the, you know, some guidance some thinking that that's going to be valuable and useful. And, and I see no problem with hosting. That. I, I guess I'm more. Yeah, let, let me just go off and think about that. But like, I, I just don't want us to become the place like, hey, you guys have this blog post and said there's going to be a long term solution to docker mirroring or whatever you know where where is it you know i'm, I'm ready <laughs> they, they seem to be it's, it's like echo of actually that the discussion on with cncf with the helm deprecation it's like should oh, cncf yeah. be involved in the helm deprecation should they just uh help people get aware of it i mean in a way it's a very it's a kind of related problem a lot a large and apparently increasing number of people are using Helm deprecated packages that are being terminated in, in a, a month's time. Um, and who, whose problem should this be? Who, how has the failure of communication with customers actually happened? Why are customers in an increasing, I mean, users in increasing numbers using these things that are literally have been deprecated for a, a year and about to be turned off? I mean, there, there's definitely, a question about like wh who how do we communicate with the users in a sort of cloud native world about what their responsibilities are and what uh, i guess because because it's kind of um they they there doesn't seem to be a natural communication channels to people to help them solve problems they have which is obviously an issue um and they're clearly doing things that they, in in many ways, are problematic and and non-economic in the long run as well for the business if a business is in the space. But for them, it's not broke. It works. Then yeah. Worried. Until the yeah. And uh, just uh, I'm just posting the link to that in the chat. That's fun. I've been reading that thread all day and <laughs> hadn't thought about the crossover. But yeah, it's an interesting thread. If if you don't know what Justin's talking about, I put a link in the chat. Thanks. I, also think I, I think to be, to be practical on the thought process, you know, we often get in these conversations where we try to write something and then somebody says, well, what is that based on? So the thought was, if we can write this high level, you know, general blog post that is, you know, in a neutral body, the thought being OCI, and it's co-authored by, you know, the, all the various cloud providers and ISVs that, you know, feel it to contribute. So it's, it's definitely coming across as, you know, not some slanted view of it. And then each cloud provider article ISV can, sorry, each cloud provider ISV can write their specific article referencing it for like, hey, here's some validated thing. And by the way, here's how you solve this in our environment. So this way it gives the basis for GitHub, Google, AWS, Azure, so on and so forth, IBM, to be able to talk about this is the basis by what we're doing. The same way like, you know, container D's out there, Docker's out there, there's this base infrastructure everybody knows about and then it gets used specifically in that environment. So it was thought to be like a framing and just quickly for to Phil's point, because I, I obviously was rushed in part of the way I said it, the thought is that we're obviously not going to provide a solution. You know, the fact that we have some reference implementations is interesting. It's more of what should we do? Like, is there, you know, should there be a, a separate registry, registry configuration? Should we have a mirror spec? Should we have a spec on promotion workflow that maybe we don't own the tools for promotion, but there's probably some general APIs that as content moves between registries and the signatures need to go with it, for instance. Um, that there's some stuff that we can enable um, so that, you know, GitHub and CircleCI and Labs and CodeFresh and all those others can build atop that as well. That was the thought. It's just it's a central place for commonality. I, I don't know if Justin has any insight you know, that's data based, but uh, 
I always feel like, uh, I mean, a few folks have said early on in this call that, you know, folks that kind of are further down the learning curve already, you know, use some, some common practices around private registries. They don't pull from public, you know, in a, in a production environment. It almost seems to me like CICD is actually a much more likely place to get hit post November than sort of general application deployed, you know, Kubernetes deployed application stacks. Uh, does that seem I, I right? Wish, I, I wish that was as true as I thought it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, okay. We are uncovering situations where customers are uh, creating Kubernetes YAML files with Docker Hub URLs in them directly for specific like common shared resources and common sort of things that then get hooked up to the rest of the system. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Or Helm charts. Because Helm charts have the same problem because Helm charts have this embedded registry name or no registry defaults to Docker. So they take a Kubernetes cluster and say, hey, deploy Prometheus or whatever all the different projects are and use this Helm chart to do it. By the way, the Helm charts all pull them from Docker Hub or GCR in some cases. Um, yeah. So even though we've, there's like three ranges. There's the core services that all of our, our clouds run. We should just be cleaning those up. And we, we do find some places, you know, we fix those up. Like that's just a, 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 a staple. There's no reason we should be running things outside of our, our own clouds. The second one is where customers run workloads. It depends on the service. AKS, you know, customers tend to be more mature about it. So they, in general, tend to know better. We have other entry level services like app services, which we can see, you know, what they're doing because it's a multi tenant service and you'd be surprised how many. In fact, it's gotten better over the years, but there is a lot of production polls pulling directly from Docker Hub. But the one that kind of caught me by surprise is the one that Michael was just kind of referring to is, you know, people take they take their Kubernetes cluster and then they want to deploy some core infrastructure and they use a Helm chart for it. And guess where it references it from? Some public resource. Yeah, I, I was going to ask about the Helm chart aspect because that's something that at DigitalOcean, like all of our customers are doing that, absolutely. Um, they're, uh, they're definitely- It's hard to hear you, Adam. I, I... Sorry, I'll get a little closer to my microphone. I've got yeah, the background noise here. Um, yeah, I was going to ask about the Helm chart aspect because at DigitalOcean, like, I'd be surprised if we had a customer that's not installing a public Helm chart that pulls from Docker. Like, it's the the standard, and for a lot of open source projects, that's now the only documented way to to deploy to Kubernetes. They don't they're not publishing raw manifests where you can easily go and change the the repos. So it's. Uh, yeah, I think that that Helm chart aspect is really important for someone to address, whether it's this group or, or someone else. Well, I mean, I'll say as the future owner of Helm V2, um, I think like as Helm charts move to V3, we're gonna have to solve the same problem on registries, right? Like it's exactly, uh, it's gonna come up again that like you'll need those Helm charts closer to wherever the customers are and not um, at whatever the, the future source is, which might be more distributed, but that like, you know, like everyone knows, like that distribution just allows for more failures to happen in the wild, right? Uh, more distinct failures. Yeah, and this is why I'm hopeful the, you know, maybe extracting the, the registry name might be the, the master switch that solves all of this. You have to go back and change these things. But, you know, again, it's like just glimpses of ideas into the future and there's lots of conversations we'll have to have. but we're all hearing and feeling the impact of it. I'd like to add a couple of thoughts here. Phil, you sort of raised reasonable concerns about like, are we sort of setting a tone where the OCI suddenly becomes responsible for everybody's software supply chains? And I don't think that's the intent, but as I listen to the various comments about the details of the problem, it seems almost inevitable that the solution will involve changes to how we think about containers and the clients and the libraries and all the various tools around it. And so we're gonna to need to have that conversation as part of this group. It's not a like how to run your service problem. It's a how, how containers work problem as part of a broader problem to be sure. Um, and I think that, you know, I agree with you that we need to have a, a different industry context for how we talk about the whole problem, but we have an acute situation right now to Brian Goff's problem about point, sorry, not problem, Brian Goff raises Docker wrote an article, this is true. 
we've just learned over and over again that our customers are not properly aware and not, you know, don't feel self-empowered and are looking for not one person guidance, but industry guidance on how to deal with this right now. And then, you know, understanding where the future will come from. So, you know, I, I would be happy to move the supply chain problem into a different context over time. We may even, there are other sort of foundations and bodies that are discussing this in other ways as well, including ones around security. Um, solutions may involve changes or adoption of protocols for signing, right? Whether it's notary v2 or graphius things or whatever, we've got, a, there's a lot of solutions on the table there too. We need to have those conversations and that's gonna involve everybody on this call. I don't know if that helps or not, or if I'm muddying the waters for you. Hey, just more notes for Phil and Amy to have to post to YouTube now. <laughs> Chad, I, I saw you joined us. You want to jump in here? I'm just going to echo all your guys. Sorry, I was a little late. I had a existing meeting and this one didn't hit my calendar until later this today. Um, I mean, I'm, I imagine Cormac's already covered the part uh, for for me. So, I mean, I, I just, I, I only recently met Michael, but I'm, I'm more or less uh, <laughs> in agreement with what Michael just said. I think, I think that part of it is also like what we're seeing, and I don't know what was discussed earlier, but like, it's not just us, it's basically everybody, um, you know, it's Helm uh, and the the ticket that I read this morning, and it's you know I think I think it's also uh, there was a, a tweet this morning that's like you know uh, uh, Hanselman was was talking about serverless is actually still servers and uh, free software is not actually free and um, like this is actually it's it's bigger than just containers it's like folks have trained themselves to uh, in a, in a way that's just not and to your point Lasker about about uh, the the environmental part of it like it's it's really it's this is just the the avalanche point but it's it's you know does it need to be this easy does it need to uh do you need to to have the 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 workflow that you currently have like can you is, is there other things but all of that is is uh it's going to be if you look at the the helm example as as a good sort of marker is that like people don't read the docs, people don't, uh, the by and, by and large users don't read our blogs and by and large users don't follow us on social. So you would need actual like tooling changes and breakages for people to actually see and make, make differences because as until that happens, it's not gonna, you know, things aren't gonna really change. Um, and the thing that we all wanna avoid is, is, is like user, there will be user pain, but like, you know, on what spectrum is that pain? I think that's the, that's, that's kind of the part that we're all at. Cause we've, we've come to love our fast inner loops with throw it away, disposable sort of like approaches and, and that might need to get revisited. And I think that's bigger than just containers or anything else. Um, I mean, certainly if you look at CI, like, you know, the biggest users in Docker Hub, uh, like it's it's because they they use Docker for CI and they every single build they keep and uh, they do that for they do that because they think they need it or because they can um, and some of them do it because they don't care to delete it but I think that's a that's more than just a a registry question or a, that's like a software engineering question. <laughs> what do you need for those things? So I don't know, that was a rambly thing. I'm sure you all covered that before I got here and I was late, so I'm, I apologize. You know, to, to some extent, we've trained our users on the, fat, on the happy fast path. And what we really need to do is retrain them in terms of the best practices that they need to take in order to uh, have uh, maintainable containers. Yeah, or, or just like maintainable, uh, workflows. Um, it's not even just any one container, right? Because it, it, like I, I, 
I think you could probably point to serverless workflows that hit this problem to multi-container workflows that hit this problem. Really, actually, if you think about it, like RPMs and DEBs have this, like any, any binary artifact has this problem. Um, so I think, I think uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's you know, more or less a software problem uh, and a workflow problem, uh, which has artifact repositories tied into it. And just yeah, to address Josh's comment, and I'm hoping he's somewhat joking about it, because you know, there there will be people that do get concerned about that. You know, it, the idea here is not that we shouldn't leverage you know open source or public content, and you know, in order to make sure that you know, part of this message talks about that, because that is how we're getting so much done, and you know, in, in relatively comparative times, is that we can leverage additional infrastructure that's out there, and, and components, and software, and code snippets, and so forth. This is certainly a lot more than um, uh, what do you call it? We always go searching for uh, code snippets. I just drew a blank. Um, so, but the question is when I get this code, even in well-intended places, it doesn't always work as intended or, or update. So we definitely want to promote uh, the ability to leverage open source content without every last piece, every last human change made um, having a dramatic impact that can take out the world. Um, if there is a workflows in place that, you know, bring public content in, given to, into a customer's environment, allows them to test and validate before they deploy, then it takes some of the burden off some changes that might happen upstream that could cause downstream changes. Um, it certainly takes the financial burden off, you know, co companies that are stuck in this position that are just trying to do the right thing and help an ecosystem. Um, and it also takes the burden off individual contributors that are trying to promote something that, oops, I tried, I made a well-intended change. It worked for 99% of the people and that 1% that it didn't work for turned out to be pretty critical to some pretty critical places. So I, I think it's just a matter of a maturity of the life cycle where images are just this production large artifact that raced ahead of the problem that we've already been seeing in NPM and Helm and others. I think it's also partly that um, there are investments that need to be made in tooling that traditionally isn't interesting for people to work on. And that, that means that like big folks that have those problems need to work on that. And uh, you know, uh, the uh, call it the mirror component of registry is a good example for like, um, it just didn't get investment. Uh, in part because, well, Docker was, was small and, and had other things that they were trying to tackle. And, and it's not, it's, it's infrastructure plumbing and it's sometimes uninteresting to work on that kind of stuff. Um, so so I, I know I've talked to Brian about, you know, uh, working, I've talked to, I think I talked to Michael about this. I've, I've talked to a bunch of you individually about like, we should get around some of these things. and. And and put some some work against them. So I think it's 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 you know it's all of these things. It's not just any one thing. Um, but there's probably investment that that needs to be made in some call it boring shit that just needs to get done. Um, hey Chad, I, I you just I gotta crack up. Like you talked about infrastructure plumbing, hard to get people to work on that kind of stuff. At Google, we have exactly the opposite problem. People love to work on infrastructure plumbing and we're trying to get them to work on end user facing products all the time. So <laughs> it's funny. Like, well, you know, then I, I want to offer <laughs> my infrastructure beer for you right there because it's uh, We met at the right time. <laughs> so <laughs> I will take some, uh, I'll take some of that, that love. <laughs> I, I agree. Like the docs, docs shouldn't be the answer because they're not going to be the answer. People read the docs after something's broken, after they assemble the thing and they wound up with extra screws or something's broken. Well, also so, like people learn off a blog post that was written by a DevRel person who isn't going back to uh, update that blog post for the thing that happened next, right? Or they're, like you said, they're going to Stack Overflow and that's like the, I think our docs are like the last, the last bastion when all of the more digested docs fail, then they come back to the deeper docs to dive in. But the, the preference is for a pre-digested doc and that those tend not to get re-updated. So, um, so can I, can I just like uh, ask uh, 
minding the time that we have. Um, are we are we actually going to go down this path of writing guidance? Because it sounds to me that there's still some um, doubts around whether OCI needs to be giving guidance in the first place. Well, I'll speak for one of the cloud providers. We really hope that we can, in this instance, at least start high-level guidance, even pointing to the various per provider, per ISP, per vendor, uh, detailed links or whatever, and give customers a single point of like, this is the story, this is how you work with it, here's deeper details for your particular cloud provider or your particular vendor or whatever. Um, as I've said before, I think this is topically relevant. Um, I'm happy to expand this to a different space over time, but I think right here, right now, it would be great if we could get a set of people to start writing the doc, get sign off and publish relatively quickly because we do have a fairly urgent situation. Um, so that's my take. I, I think Steve and I are on the same page here. Um, I suspect others are, but like that's really the, the, the question before this group right now. It'll be great if you can give guidance because I've been giving guidance for three years and people have been yelling at me. Oh, <laughs> well, that was part of the motivation, quite frankly, is to give some credence to the follow-up guidance, um, if there's like, we each have customers, right? The customers are gonna be running on our clouds. They're gonna get a failure. Could have a failure, it may not have nothing to do with this, but they're gonna blame this problem. So when they start reading it, we wanna be able to provide them with some context. And if they're distrustful of it, in our cloud-specific articles, RSV-specific articles, we can point to, here's this article that talks about the general problem. Here's how you solve it in this platform. Um, I get worried a little bit over, and you know, we can talk about this around the OCI kind of putting links to the various vendors because that starts to get a little weird as an advertising platform. But certainly from our cloud providers, you know, we can point back to this article because the customers are already working with a specific, uh, a specific cloud and they're having this problem. We just want to provide to your point, Nisha, some validation that this is not a broken thing because of Docker or because of that cloud specific implementation. Um, there's a general pattern to follow. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, I was just saying that because I personally would appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, anything to help towards that, I'd be happy to provide uh, the guidance that I've written up for VMware anyway. Chris, did you, uh, I see you typing some stuff. Did you just wanna? Yeah, sorry, I was super late. Um, no, no. Uh, is there like a Google Doc or anything you have already, Steve, on that you're proposing? Because it would be easier just for us to kind of collaborate. Uh, yeah, so I, and if you already shared it, sorry. <laughs> I, I hadn't shared it yet because um, so what I did because there really isn't much there. What's there is this rough outline and some articles and a, and a section because I, I, I wasn't looking to write this myself and have everybody else go, yes. It was, yeah. there's lots of opinions, um, there's maybe too many opinions. So I was trying to figure out if we can get some kind of nominations of some people and then that group would work on it. Cause this is obviously not something we want to take like a year to get. We want to get yeah. it out next week or two. Um, so I'll, I guess I'll take the, um, uh, the, the focal point, if you will. Yeah. So for those that are interested, you know, uh, ping me um, and we'll, keep on reviewing it certainly with this group and the idea is we hopeful we'll get this out prior to november 1st and then our clouds can have and, and isps i use clouds very generically here uh, can have some guidance that says hey if you're using docker Hub today just stick the credentials in hopefully the various services have that ability and um so that you understand where the direction is going here's what you can do and then we each in various forms probably have pieces of this workflow, might be more assembly required than others, but at least customers can start seeing that. So there's like kind of this progression. And then um, somewhere in the next several weeks when things calm down a little bit for various other reasons, uh, I'm hoping we can start conversations around what should the tooling look like? Is there anything, obviously the competitors should go after it. Like there's no question that we really want a competitive ecosystem. Um, at the same token, there's probably some things that we need to do in the central place to enable 
you know, this workflow, um, whether it be an eventing model in registries or a discovery model, like, you know, so on and so forth. Or, or whatever we want to do with that in our. So uh, we got a couple of minutes left. So just to wrap up, um, the, as, as Chris mentioned, this is probably a good OCITOV conversation, um, kind of the next steps. So we can take that. There obviously is TOV members on the call yep. here. And um, if you're interested in you know, co-authoring that with us, please let me know. And we'll, uh, we'll take it to the TOB, vote whether yep. we feel like it is or isn't the right thing under OCI. If it's not, we'll find another place that like we do want to get this out. I think that's a clear thing. It just feels like the OCI seemed like the right place for that. Yep. Um, and if we don't think it's the right place, then we can find another place. Yeah, I, I think it's rare for you not to have all the different kind of clouds and folks involved in container land <laughs> that are part of the TOB. <laughs> so it makes, I think it makes sense. Um, yeah, no, we're happy to help. Like once you have something to share, uh, please do. And uh, we could do, we could go through a formal process and have the TOB vote uh, and, and go for it and, and kind of treat it as a living document that evolves over time. All right, well, thanks everybody for helping talk through this and figure it out. Steve, really thank you for leading the, leading the conversation here. Um, we're certainly very grateful and um, at least someone on my team, or at least most people will be involved in helping out. So we'll be in touch with you, Steve, directly. And thank you. And I wanna also say thank you to Docker. It's like, you know, this is a hard spot for them to get caught in. And you know, it's, uh, I think that it's certainly a problem that falls on their shoulders right now, but it's really not limited to their problem. Uh, Brian was joking the other day about, Thank you for handing me your cogs or so there was some joke around there of like you know a, and it's like no thanks wait a second here can we come up with a better model so hopefully whatever we come up with here will trickle out to the the helms and the npms and the other ones and we'll figure out a, a, a good model workflow so to josh's point we can leverage open source reliably so thanks folks thanks everybody. do you think you'll be involved in in this or who from docker do you guys want to have involved it will be justin or me Great, um, awesome. And that's just on, on availability. And okay. so like Justin and I will figure out who it's going to be and it'll be Justin or myself. Fantastic. So I interrupted you, Phil. I apologize. No, no, I was just saying thanks, everybody. All right, that's a wrap. I guess Josh pick up next week. Yep, sounds good. All right. Thanks, folks. <laughs>